Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a glorious, and I mean glorious, yummy, sexy disc of chamber music. It is this one on Naxos, featuring Inescu's Piano Quartet No. 1 and his Piano Trio. Now, Inescu is not normally known as a chamber music guy, um, just because people don't play as much of it as he wrote, and also because he didn't write as much of it as he wrote. What I mean by that is that Inescu was one of those musical geniuses who said, had everything in his head. And because it was all in his head, he didn't always bother to write it down. So he would have opus numbers of things like opus 20, numbers 1, 2, and 3, but the only one he would write down would be 1 or 3 or not 2. Well, some of the chamber music had that had that happen to it. There should have been more than there was. But what there is is really kind of remarkable. I, I don't know how much you've listened to of Inescu's chamber music, but the guy was pretty remarkable. And I will say this, there is a good... There's a rationale for preferring his chamber music to his orchestral music, aside from like the Romanian Rhapsodies and, the, you know, the stuff he's really famous for. And the reason for that is that his orchestral music is extraordinarily dense. He was one of those guys, and there were a lot of them in, in the world, like, you know, Rager was one or Florence Schmidt was another. They just liked notes, lots and lots of notes, gobs of notes. And when they saw a big orchestra, you know, in front of them, their eyes just lit up and the notes started pouring out in, in, in a torrent. And that can make their orchestral music really busy and somewhat difficult. I love it personally, but it's not easy. And, you know, there's, there's, there's a, a mistake. It's a mistake to assume that because Inescu was something of a romantic nationalist, you know, Romania's national composer and all of that stuff, that his music is folksy and easy. It's not. The folk element is pervasive, as it is with Bartok, but the music itself is, is enormously complex. It's all at a very, very high level of musicianship, and it demands effort of the performers and of listeners. But when you're dealing with chamber music, when you're only dealing with a little handful of players, well, uh, that tends to impose a natural logistical limit on the amount of notiness that you can indulge in. And so it does here. But with that said, with that said, there is no question that Inescu's love of writing big, rich, yummy, luscious, you know, contrapuntally busy textures is just as is just as pronounced in these works as it is in the orchestral ones. So the result is chamber music that is just big and rich and sexy and contrapuntally busy, but my God, it's, it's easier to hear. It's just easier to hear. And these are both early pieces. Um, they date from 1916 for the trio and 1909 for the piano quartet number one. He was born in 1881. But remember, he was writing symphonies by the time he was like eight. He was like Mozart. He was just an unbelievable prodigy. And so, and so uh, these pieces are, well, I just have to play you some samples. Thank God they're on Naxos, and they are fabulously played. We have to talk about these performers because they're just wonderful. They are, let's see, Stefan Tarara, violin, Molly Carr, viola, uh, Yun Sun Hong, cello, and Josu de Salon, piano, Salon. I mean, I probably mangled those, but I don't care. They are splendid, splendid players. And I'm going to mangle them again before we get to the end of this talk. But first, I want to play you a little sample, just so you have an idea of what to expect. This is wonderful music. It really is. It's just, it's, you're not going to believe you don't know this and haven't heard it. Let's listen to a bit of the finale of the trio, which begins, by the way, with a riff on what sounds like the funeral march from, you know, Chopin's famous second piano sonata, only not, I mean, it's got strings and it's sort of bigger and beefier and longer, but it's similar in some respects. And then the movement takes off. And as it takes off, here is some of what you are going to hear.
special. I mean, it's amazing that only three people are making this sound. And the same thing in the piano quartet number one, where only four people are making that sound. And I have a little bit of the slow movement of the piano quartet number one to play you because, oh, it's so evocative. It really is. I, I just It's just late romantic lusciousness. That's, you know, and the rest of it doesn't really matter. I mean, the form takes care of itself. It really does. They're not terribly long pieces. I mean, ridiculously so. The trio is only 21 minutes. It's actually concise which is something Inescu is not usually. And the piano quartet is 37 minutes, which is a serious symphonic length. Let's listen to a bit. They're all in three movements, by the way. Um, so each movement is, is substantial for whatever the length of the work is. Let's listen to a bit of the slow movement of the piano quartet. Boy, is this something. You have never heard chamber music for piano and strings on this, this level of... of, of yumminess. Here you go. Yeah, isn't that terrific? I hope it really makes you want to hear the whole thing because it is extraordinary. I absolutely guarantee. And I need to thank Jed Distler, you know, our, our ClassicsToday.com's piano maven and all around like composer, piano genius guy um, for bringing this disc to my attention because he heard it and he called me up and he said, you got to listen to this. It's really, really great. And so I put it on with no expectations whatsoever because I have stacks of discs I want to listen to and said, okay, let's give it a shot. And I was transfixed and you will be too. So let us repeat. That is Stefan Tarara, Bali Carr, Yun Sun Hong, and, and Josu de Salon playing fabulously together in the chamber music of Georges Enescu. And boy, oh boy, is that special. I, I really, I, you know, that's what makes this job fabulous, that you come across these things that you've never really paid attention to or heard of before, and they just blow you away. The possibility is always there. And it's not even a rarity. It happens with some frequency. It's absolutely fantastic. And this is on Naxos, and it's amazing. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.